42 to 40 years old. They're being held at the Raymond Detention Center on $250,000 bonds. Hines County Supervisors are considering a pay raise for jailers, Tammy. That's right. This comes after last month's Department of Justice report. Now, it found poorly trained officers in the understaffed jails. The report says the lack of guards left some prisoners vulnerable to attacks from other prisoners. Now, supervisors say the current starting pay for officers is around $26,000. We do understand and realize that the sheriff is competing with neighboring um, uh, communities, uh, we're going to be competing with a federal prison in Yazoo soon, and uh, most of the time we're losing officers, and it's hard to retain good officers just because of pay. Now, board members have not said when they could take up that pay hike. Quitman County deputies are searching for two inmates. They say walked away from a work detail. Deputies are searching for 25-year-old Caleb Dalvinport, 31-year-old Zachary Reed. They were last seen cutting grass at Coma County Community College around noon today. Now, both were wearing green and white striped pants and a white MDOC shirt with MDOC convict printed on the back. If you see either of these inmates, call the Mississippi Department of Corrections at 662-745-6611. Well, it was a flooded mess in Bellhaven over the weekend. Take a look at this. Streets turned into rivers. Now residents are pleading for help before the next big rain. 16 WAPT's Scott Simmons is live along Bellhaven Creek to explain. Scott. Yeah, residents here along St. Mary Street point out this is a far cry from what we had just one day ago. A constant reminder, a reoccurring reminder that when heavy rains come, it spells problems for people who live by this creek. The term, a river runs through it, applied yesterday. This video taken by a resident standing right where I'm standing today. A torrent of rain leading to a rush of water backing up Bellhaven Creek. Residents here say they've asked the city for help, but none seems to be on the way. The houses have received water multiple times here, uh, and it's just frustrating. You know, your flooded roof really doesn't cover a whole lot, and you're just here to clean up the mess. It gets all the way up to the windowsills of those homes. They, they, all these homes are in tremendous jeopardy here. I asked the city for an on-camera interview. Instead, I was sent a lengthy statement that seemed to deal with the broad issues of flooding in Jackson. From Public Works Director Keisha Powell, the statement reads, In some cases, we have found storm drains have collapsed, which requires more extensive repair. And in other cases, we are finding that the heavy rains and flash flooding hydraulically exceeds the design of the drainage system. The statement goes on to point out that there is a, currently a drainage study underway in the city, and they have crews out currently assessing the problems, but residents in this area of Bellhaven Creek fear it's going to take more than cleaning drains out to fix this problem. Live in Jackson, Scott Simmons, 16 WAPT News. Well, Megan, students who failed that third grade statewide reading test are getting a chance at another type of exam. An eye exam, Tammy. The Mississippi Optometric Association and Lieutenant Governor Tate Reeves are working together to make sure all third graders who failed the test and don't have insurance can get their eyes checked for free. The program lasts through July 31st. Jackson Public Schools tell us 75% of third graders have passed the test, while the other metro school districts scored in the 90th percentile. Clinton today told us 99% of their third graders passed. Students will have one more chance to pass the test this summer. Kosciuszko police are searching for a runaway teenager. 14-year-old Mykendronia Lewis was last seen May 26th. If you know where she is, you're asked to call Kosciuszko police at 662-289-3131. Jackson police are also investigating a deadly shooting. Police say it happened early Saturday morning on Miles Alley. Officers have not yet released the identity of the man killed. A man is facing DUI charges in a wreck that killed two high school seniors. The Highway Patrol says this wreck happened in Marshall County along Highway 78 near the DeSoto County line early Sunday. Melendez Penson is charged with two counts of DUI death. Authorities say Rachel Lynch and Maddie Cruz died when Penson crashed into them. He's being held in the Marshall County Jail. A teenager is accused of stealing a Jackson County Sheriff's deputy's patrol car. The sheriff says deputies responded to a domestic call in Moss Point. When they got there, 19-year-old Chance Deerman left the home and headed towards the patrol car. Deputies say he then took off. One of the, uh, the deputy had uh, left his patrol car running. It was locked. The young man tried to open the car door, which was locked. And then uh, as the officer got closer to him with a key fob in his pocket, uh, the car suddenly became unlocked. 
The sheriff says the teenager took off in that deputy's car. They ended up chasing him for nearly a mile before he crashed it. The teenager is charged with carjacking and felony pursuit. One of the so-called Brookhaven family murder suspects has died in jail, Tammy. Yeah, you're talking about 32-year-old Jimmy Lyons. Well, he was found dead in his cell on Saturday. The sheriff says Lyons appeared fine when guards served him breakfast around 7.30 this morning. Now, the coroner says he didn't find any signs of trauma. Officials do plan on doing an autopsy. Now, prosecutors charge Lyons in connection with the murder of 9-year-old Jemiah Sims and her father, Jermaine Sims. Once again, he was found in Lincoln County on Saturday, dead in his cell. Well, the state Supreme Court refused to hear an appeal from a death row inmate who killed a newspaper delivery man. A jury convicted 35-year-old Marlon Howell in the 2000 death of David Purnell. Now, Purnell was delivering newspapers, and prosecutors say Howell flagged him down and tried to rob him. The Supreme Court also refused to grant Howell a new trial. Well, Whataburger says an egg shortage has forced them to change their breakfast times. The new hours from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. on weekdays and from 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. on weekends. They used to serve it 12 hours a day. The Department of Agriculture says the bird flu has killed off almost 44 million birds, leading to that shortage. Well, the new obesity poll is out, and Mississippi is once again on top of the list. But they have company, West Virginia, Delaware, Louisiana, and Arkansas all made the top five. Now, the Gallup Healthways poll says Montana is the skinniest state, followed by Colorado, Nevada, Minnesota, and Massachusetts. Now, Gallup released the results late last month. These are the 2013 results. Participants self-reported their height and their weight. Well, Bruce Jenner, like you've never seen him before, Megan, on the cover of Vanity Fair. Revealing a new look and a new identity, Tammy, Caitlyn Jenner. In the July issue of Vanity Fair, Jenner opens up about the transition, recalling a panic attack she suffered after facial surgery. Her four children from her first two marriages also open up about their father and this change. The magazine interviewed all three of Jenner's ex-wives, including Kris Kardashian, who you may remember did not speak with ABC during Diane Sawyer's April special on Bruce Jenner. Jenner said the photo shoot was not about fanfare, but about her life and who she is as a person now. The issue hits digital newsstands June 9th. It'll be in stores June 16th. And we should mention, Caitlyn Jenner will receive a big honor next month. She'll take home the Arthur Ashe Courage Award at the 2015 ESPYs. The ESPYs air Wednesday, July 15th, right here on 16 WAPT. Now, since the story broke, our Facebook page has been filling up with your comments. That's, of course, no surprise. Here are just a couple of them. Christina says, I don't get why people get so worked up. Let her live her life, and if she's happy, that's what matters. Gene says, disgraceful. He should not be given a picture in a magazine cover. He was born a man, and God doesn't make mistakes. We'd love to hear what you think tonight. You can leave a comment on the 16 WAPT Facebook page or send us a tweet on Twitter. Happening tomorrow, a runoff election for the North Mississippi congressional seats. Democrat Walter Zinn and Republican Trent Kelly are facing off to fill the seat held by Alan Nunley. Nunley passed away in February after a long battle with brain cancer. The winner will serve the remainder of his two-year term, which is set to end in January of 2017. A Republican senator from South Carolina is the latest to enter the presidential race. I'm Lindsey Graham, and I'm running for president of the United States. Senator Lindsey Graham making his announcement in his hometown, that's central South Carolina. Graham was first elected to the Senate in 2002 after serving eight years in the House. He may face an uphill battle to the GOP nomination. A recent Quinnipiac poll of likely GOP voters showed Graham getting just 1% support from those they surveyed. The new dean of Mississippi State's Bagley College of Engineering started today. Jason Keith had served as interim leader of the school. His selection still has to be approved by the AHL board. MSU officials say he was chosen after a nationwide search. And today marks the start of the Atlantic hurricane season. NOAA is predicting 6 to 11 named storms this season, with 3 to 6 of those becoming hurricanes and as many as 2 becoming major hurricanes. 
And of course, we will not forget this year marks the 10th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. Hard to believe it's been 10 years. Yeah, and you know, those, these number predictions really yeah. don't mean anything because we're heading into the season and the Eastern Pacific is already busy. We have two okay. named storms. And I can also tell you we're in an El Nino year. We expect the Eastern Pacific to be super active. But in El Nino years, 1957, Hurricane Audrey plastered Louisiana, one of the